Minneapolis, shit's going down over there, and there have been discussions about defunding the police. Now, as many of you know, I am an anarchist and opposed to the police. And as I said this morning on Twitter to Matt Walsh, the arguments against single-payer security are exactly the same uh, as the arguments for single against single-payer health care. Uh, there's no reason to have a government union monopoly in charge of providing security for you and your loved ones. Um, it's And again, it's the police that keep the citizenry, especially in cities, disarmed and helpless. I, I love this argument from the people who defend the police who say, well, boy, I'm sure you'd love it if the cops weren't near your by when you're getting robbed. I'm like, well, I'm sure I'd love it if I had a gun in my house or I had access to private security that I could call that would be there faster than a government union. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to thank the person who disarmed me for them later sometimes being able to help me. Um, so, but the thing is these discussions, and I've talked to some people, it's, it, they're like, they don't, they're not anarchists in the sense that you are. They don't really want there not to be uh, security. They, they, they want community organizers and like, what do you do with the actual murderers? And uh, one of these people was on, I believe, MSNBC, trying to answer these very fair and various obvious questions. And I wanted to see if we can parse her point of view. She's from the Minneapolis City Council. Let's check it out. By the city council certainly got a lot of people's attention last night, and we're so happy to have you clarify this. So, what are you trying to do? Are you hoping by dismantling the Minneapolis Police Department that you will be getting rid of the police department? <laughs> That's what dismantling means. You know, I think in Minneapolis, watching George Floyd's death um, and the four the actions of the four police officers that were involved has been a huge wake up call for so many in Minneapolis to see what many already knew, which is that our police department is hold not- on, Hold on, hold on, The hell is her decor? Why do you have a shelf with nothing, a st stack of shelves with nothing on it? You know you're going on TV, put something there. What, that is just creepy. This is, this is like when they have those, like, um, what do you call it when you model a house, when they have like the apartment set up for like potential buyers and they bring in all that fake furniture so you could kind of look what, it, see what it'll look like. That is some Ikea shit there. Okay, go ahead. Every member of our She needs to dismantle her furniture. And so I think step one for us is to tell the truth. Nine council members from communities all across the city of all different backgrounds standing together to tell the truth and say, this system isn't working for too many of our neighbors for too long. Our reform efforts have failed and we have done many, many attempts at reform and new leadership in the department and many things, uh, and we still see um, this tragic death. And so I think the wake up of our community is what's driving the city council's announcement yesterday. And now the hard work begins for us to anything. rebuild systems this just that talk. really work to keep all of our community safe. But to be clear, yeah. you're not talking about reform. The word dismantle is intentionally different than reform. This is more than reform. This is dismantling. I mean, activists who support this are calling this a police-free future. Yeah, and you know, a lot of us were asked if we could imagine a future without police back in 2017 when we, when we were running for office. And I answered yes to that question. To me, that, that future is a long way away and it would take an enormous amount of investment. Hold on, hold on. It's really easy to imagine a police free future. You just imagine no one's ever committing crimes. <laughs> oh, look at this! We're all taller now! <laughs> what the hell? That's not the issue. The imagination's not the problem here. The reality's the problem here. God. Anything Although, you know what? In all seriousness... No, never mind. I'm not going to say it. Go on. Is ...that we know work to keep people safe. I mean, for a lot of folks in our community, stable housing is a safety issue. Having access to health care is a safety issue. What? And so, having... You know, I think... I, I got raped because I don't have a doctor. Yeah, my, my, this guy mugged me because of the lead paint on my walls. This is that kind of really uh, uh, very, it's a specific type of thinking, and I don't even have a term for it off the top of my head, where everything bad is the same as everything else that's bad. Like when they talk about like environmental racism, and like, yes, that's true, that black people tend to be poorer, and poor people tend to have it worse when it comes to harmful environments. That's uh, going to be a consequence, and there are things that you could do to mitigate this, and, sh and in my view, sh certainly should mitigate this, but it's just like, yeah, I mean, 
you know, not having, um, yeah, I guess you could fairly say, you know, being the target of a home invasion is a health issue. You are going to be have mental issues as a consequence and, and harm to your uh, face and body as well. God, oh God, go on. Thing folks are asking is to stop again. investing so oh, yeah. much money in this militarized police force and instead invest in the things that our community really needs. So, you know, I know the statement was bold and I, I stand by that bold statement, but the work ahead of us will be long. It will include every member of our community. It has to. That's and, you know, I think we have very immediate things. We have a state action against our police department which gives us legal mechanisms in the very short term. You know, there's lessons from all over the country, all over the world that we're looking to yeah. um, to take immediate steps while we work toward building the systems that we would need to imagine that, that future. Do you understand yeah. that <laughs> no, the no. word dismantle or police free <laughs> also makes some people yeah. nervous? For instance, what if in the middle of the night, my home is broken into? Who do I call? I love it, hold on, I love that. <laughs> You know, you, as an anarchist, I have to handle these questions because they're extremely germane. It's like, all right, this is a very simple proposition. If you're if you're saying this, what do you do in this very obvious thing? And I love how now you're talking to her and it's like, okay, I got you. Everyone's in it together. Better housing, more health care. Great. What about... What the really most specific case you need the cops for, you're getting robbed in the middle of the night. Go on. Oh, God, this is so good. Yes, I mean, I, I hear that loud and clear from a lot of my neighbors. And I know, <laughs> and, and myself she, too. What she I'm, means is she hears her neighbors screaming for the police in the middle of the night as they're getting raped. I hear it loud and clear. Help, help, call the police. And I'm like, look, I care about you. I'm getting you health care after you've been raped. I'll get you that abortion from that rape baby you're carrying now. Oh my God. That comes from a place of privilege because for those of us for whom the system is working, I think we need to step back and imagine what it would feel like to already live in that reality where what? calling the police may mean more harm is done. And so in the very immediate, we have to lean into whatever changes we can make in our existing police department. You know, I think we look to cities oh like God. Camden, New Jersey, that completely restructured their department. Restructured! As we build up systems. And we've already done that. We have, we are not starting from scratch. We have oh, invested shit. in community-based safety strategies. We have knowledge in our community across the city. We've done an analysis of all the reasons people call 911 and have looked at ways we can shift the response away from armed police officers into a more appropriate response for mental health calls. Um, for hold, some on, hold on. Why call the cops while you're being gang raped when you could call a shrink after you've been gang raped? It's going to be cheaper. That's just, you know, fiscal conservatism. I, 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 had gi I had given these people no credit, like none, like at all. And it's, it, how is it possible that I should have given them like negative credit? This is amazing. Go on, please. Domestic violence calls for um, health related issues. And so the groundwork is laid already in Minneapolis for us to, to build on that, to learn from folks around the world, but really also to listen to our community and put those community voices about? front and center as we build up those systems even further. On a political point, as a just Democrat, let it go? are you worried that you have just handed President Trump a great talking point or slogan or battle cry for his re-election to be able to say, see, Democrats want to get rid of your police. Yeah. First they come to take away your guns, I, as he I, says. I do love that the CBN Aparachik is concerned about the real stuff. Notice she doesn't say, aren't you concerned that a lot more people in your community are going to be the victims of violent crime? No, 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 no. She cares about what she cares about. Aren't you concerned that this is going to help Donald Trump? Amazing.